Hi everyone, this is Veronica. Today our topic of discussion is on political advertisements on Twitter, this menace of micro-targeting political ads. For my video updates and queries, you can connect with me on Instagram and Facebook because I feel together we can make a difference. Now, let me tell you about the premium content of Study IQ. You can get it at Rs 159 per month only. You can become the member of Study IQ channel. There are certain perks related to it which won't be available to other subscribers. For example, videos by Dr. Gaurav Garg, Daily Current Affairs, Monthly Banking Awareness, Monthly Best 200 Current Affairs, by Prashant Dhawan, Monthly Compilation of Most Important Geopolitics and IR Issues, by Dr. Mahipal Singh Rathor, Monthly 5 Premium Videos. And here we have launched Madhya Pradesh PSC Prelims Test Series course also. You can buy this at Rs. 1500 uh, only. For additional information, you can visit www.testiq.in. Here you will get 10 tests and 1 demo test. So now in what context today we are studying this? See, the leading social media platforms like Twitter are considering ban on micro-targeted political ads. So the new policy details of which will be unveiled uh, next month. So they would ban ads on political issues as well as from candidates. So this is in process to growing criticism over misinformation from politicians on social media. Explaining the ban, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey tweeted that while internet advertising is incredibly powerful and very effective for commercial advertisers, that power brings significant risks to politics. He said the reach of political messages should be earned and not bought. So this is huge line that it should be earned and not bought, right? This is a good line to uh, use in answer writing. So news of the ban has actually divided America's political camps for 2020 election also. Twitter rival Facebook recently ruled out a ban on political ads. Now, what is online political advertising? So see, online political advertisings include your messages intended to reach a large audience through periodicals, sample ballots, websites, emails, text messages, social media and other online electronic formats, which enables any kind of exchange of communication. These ad campaigns are used for appealing directly or indirectly for votes or for financial or other support in any election campaign. So there are two different things that make online political advertising different from usual advertising and they are one is your targeting which means online advertising allows especially on social networks for a kind of targeting that wasn't possible at the same level before. And invisibility, that means if there's targeted advertising on social media platform, not everyone gets to know of it. So how are these issues with micro-targeting in political sense? See, personalized targeting. So what they do here, one is your personalized targeting. Which is based on multiple attributes is possible through the platforms like Facebook and Twitter. Facebook, for instance, let me tell you, allows to choose a person from a particular caste, also from a particular class in the same caste. So targeting advertising makes it possible for two people connected to internet from the same source to get two different advertisements. Suppose you and your friend have the same source that you are connected with, but still you both will see two different advertisements. So micro-targeting has got potentially damaging results in context of political advertising, particularly during the elections. So these platforms make it possible to go from manufacturing consent to manipulating the consent. So what they do, they manipulate the consent. So a person is continuously fed with information to vote for in a favor of a particular party. So this methodology is in which these platforms have got their business models and are engaging deeply in subverting the Indian democratic process is a very, very serious cause of concern. So what is the stand of social medias on micro-targeting? What are these companies saying? So many social media platforms, they are claiming that they are only intermediaries providing space. So it's not their responsibility. They are not accountable that the content is being generated by people to be consumed by the people. And then these social medias have no role to play. And moreover, they also defend themselves by saying that they have a clause that they are not automatically liable for what people are seeing on those platforms. So in short, they are not taking any responsibility. So the people who are actually saying things should be liable. 
so not necessarily th uh, those who are carrying it without knowing that they are carrying most of the time online platforms in comparison with political ads and newspapers are able to provide greater transparency because we see in newspapers there is much more transparency so now what do you suggest what measures should we take here let me tell you about the two measures that we can take for example the role of election commission is very important here because when people come to participate and engage in democratic process the election commission and the rpa rpa is your representation the representation of the people's act mandate that people should be allowed to take a very clear stand to look at what has happened in the last 5 years and then they can decide how to vote freely and fairly so that is why rpa rpa this clearly lists a certain set of things free and fair elections where even the use of money and manipulation should not be allowed to happen then the election, election commission should also come up with the new methodologies these methodologies include the existing ones are not sufficient to address the micro targeting political advertisements that that is why it is a need there is a need to bring new methodologies the election commission also should make the public the way in which the advertising is being conducted where is the money coming for money associated with it and the people who are being reached with it so election commission should reach out to government of india and look at departments that are capable of handling this and if they don't exist it should start creating infrastructure that will be able to look into all these aspects then the role of social media platforms is very important these corporations they are responsible for the political advertisement they need to be very transparent when there is a question of elections they need to bring out all the ways in which advertisements are displayed and where is the money associated with them coming from so all the legislation that apply now for reasonable restrictions and freedom of speech and the freedom of press also apply should also apply to these platforms so these platforms are culpable when they are they have the intent of their business model allow such subversion of the democratic process they need to be brought in line to ensure that indian democracy is safe now another question that arises here should online political advertising be regulated should be regulated because background i have almost told you so the thing is here background we have discussed that political advertising is advertisements used for purpose of appealing directly or indirectly for votes or for financial or other support in any campaign so it includes usage of media from conventional to social media purpose so here democracy why there should be a stricter regulation because democracy requires free and fair elections voters should be given all the details they need to make an informed decision misinformation is proliferated and highly emotive subjects handled in ways that could easily be constructed as manipulative this harms the spirit of fair elections in our country and the distribution of this manipulative content through tv and social media is providing the destructive uh, proving very destructive for the democracy next thing is self regulatory system has not worked political parties are morally responsible to follow a code of conduct during election but in the absence of independent controls the only thing we are left to cling to in the hope that political campaigning follows some set of rules are the morals of politicians which are totally absurd so politicians simply shrug off the issue and continue without any regulation so regulation self regulation model of media has actually failed and brought fissures to the surface and it needs to be regulated next is your freedom of speech does not grant freedom to deceive or right to deceive because freedom of speech provides the political advertising should not be strictly regulated but freedom of speech is meant to ensure protection of diversity of opinion and the individual's right to express in a reasonable manner but here what we are seeing lies what we are seeing deception so this lies deception and triacry are not covered under freedom of speech to influence voting behavior so manipulated content is congress with freedom of speech and then we can see a blurred line between editorial content and advertising advertisements must be uh, distinguishable 
from editorial content. However, by mimicking the style of news program or documentary or party political, uh, these party political broadcasts intentionally lose the distinction. So advertisements are often misleading. Advertisement often they cause offenses. So the, that is why there is a need for a stricter regulation. So this is how we discuss today's topic that about the ban on political ads. Why we need a stricter regulation? But obviously there are pros and cons. There are good things that social media is still not regulated. But however, if we look at the longer term, it is proving very harmful for the democracy. So what are your views on this? You can tell me in the comment box. Thank you. So this is a channel study IQ. If you're preparing for UPSC or any government exam, our pen drive and tablet courses are available. If you're preparing for UPSC CAC 2020, our pen drive course is available where you can find 100% coverage of UPSC VAS syllabus. Daily current affair updates will be available. Self-paced learning process is provided. This course has been prepared by top faculties of Study IQ, and now you can purchase this course at Rs. 625 per month only. For additional information, you can visit our site and there are the phone numbers also given. You can call them and gain the additional information. You can connect with me for my video updates on Instagram and Facebook because I feel together we can make a huge difference. For queries, you can even email me. Thank you so much.